Today is Friday, May 7th. Welcome to episode 15 of Fish Wrap TV. I'm your host, Janie Hansen, filming live here in Blue Earth, Minnesota, as usual, with Q Lair. The markets this week have been anything but usual, right? Uh, the big topic today is drought. Uh, we'll get into what the drought in Brazil means for the corn um, and ethanol markets, uh, talk a little bit about crude oil, uh, soybeans and soy oil, and canola, um, along with wheat and the uh, drought in North Dakota, and, and along with what's coming up and the uh, <laughs> frequently um, added topic of the lumber and copper markets um, and the recent jobs report. So um, let's get after it. Okay. Well, uh, we had a pretty wild week this week yet again. And, you know, to give everybody a, a little hint out there, this usually is a harbinger of an enormous trade this summer. And what I mean by that is wild, volatile, and who knows what's going to happen. Uh, first up, we, we have to talk about the, the drought in Brazil is intensifying on the Safrina crop. Um, there's already talk that they've lost 600, 6 million tons of corn off their 109 metric ton a crop 103. I would be surprised if they haven't lost a little bit more, but we'll know next Wednesday with the WASDE report. So, at any rate, uh, if you look at the uh, the, the Sofrina crop concerns, uh, the the right map shows exactly what the problem is, and that large block, which is called Mato Grosso, at the upper left of the gray area, is is essentially the size of the I states. And they grow a ton and ton and ton of, of the, the grains in uh, the Brazilian, uh, in, in Brazilian uh, inventory. Now what that means is that uh, that is highly drought intensive right now. On the left you see, uh, it looks just like our drought monitor. You see the, the browns and, and the yellows and stuff like that, which means you know the drought is intensifying and we do not have forecast for any rain for the next two weeks in, in the Mato Grosso and, and the, the growing areas. This reminds me so much of, you know, when you get a high pressure dome locked in against a jet stream, like in 88, when uh, all of the storms moved north of the Corn Belt and we were just stuck in a high pressure cell. And that looks like what they got here. And this is the first time we've had a major one in Brazil but, you know, this is heading into their critical growing period for, for Safrina corn. We do not have the same situation for, for the United States at the moment. But the, the next graph will show you, you know, the, the, this is the Midwest. This is where the vast majority of the corn is grown in the United States outside of Nebraska. And, you know, that doesn't count because that's, uh, you know, coming out of the Ogallala. But as you see, we've, we've got a couple of tight areas. Uh, you know, Iowa has lost the red. So even, even the, the Midwest is starting to look okay. What this means is that this is the ultimate for the United States farmer because we're going to be able to grow corn, and instead of th with a three in front of it, we've got a five or a six in front of it because of what you just saw in that Brazilian map. Mm -hmm. And this has happened three times in my career. Uh, 1975 with the Soviet Union when they just had a complete failure of their wheat crop. They had to come buy it, and it went, phew, exploded. And then, of course, you know, 2010, when, when Russia had a huge drought out there in the steppes, and they had to cut off exports, and, and we took corn back up to the sevens okay. that year. So, you know, these are situations where if you look at 88 drought, 83 drought, 08, you know, we had problems with the United States. If th this will be the greatest thing ever if we can produce our, our usual crop at these prices courtesy of Brazil. So, you know, it goes back to what we call, you know, the farmer's prayer on Twitter is, you know, Lord, kill everybody's crop except mine. <laughs> and, you know, that's where the United States is sitting right now because, you know, Australia just had probably the, the I think it was the second, second or third biggest wheat crop they've ever had. Uh, but this La Nina has really, you know, set this pressure cell over Brazil and it is looking bad. And, and 6 million tons, I mean, I mean it's, it's 240 million bushels. I mean, it's not super big in, in the grand scheme of thing, but you know, you're starting to knock off margins uh, on the carryouts, and the numbers are getting smaller and smaller, especially with, with beans being tight this year. So it's, <laughs> it, is, it is pretty wild. And, uh, but what that also does is brings us to you know, what they call king corn now, 
and we've gone from king beans to king corn and, on Twitter. And uh, as you can see from the from the from the graph here in in the corn market, this is a uh, these corn. Um, another shot up today. And remember, Janie, we were talking about the, you know consolidating the moving up. Here mm -hmm. we are. I mean, thing is, is that you know make make me think I'm a technical trader listening to me talk about this stuff. But it's pretty much anybody who's been around the block a few times knows yeah. the, these things when it comes out. Mm -hmm. Well, the you know, we just fl finished up planting on, on our farm this morning, so you know, crops are getting in the ground, and you know, it's bright, sunny, clear blue sky here, but we could use a little shot of rain, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. now, it's, it's a bit dry, mm -hmm. but yeah, we're, we're in no danger at all. Of course, we're not even into any heat yet to, to speak mm -hmm. of, so uh, we're also heading into hurricane season, and you know, everybody better watch out because... You know, all it takes for, is for one hurricane to hit west of New Orleans and, you know, come up the pipe and, you know, all this drought's going to be gone everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> up here. I mean, gone. And, um, you know, it's, you know, some, sometimes, you know, you just got to say, you know, seven bucks is enough, six bucks or six fifty is enough in the new crop and stuff like that. But, you know, people are not talking about $8 corn, you know, $10 corn, you know, all time highs. And I go, oh, Lord, here we go again. Yeah. But, uh, you know, the fundamentals don't bear it out. We're starting to see some supply destruction. Although today we had something very, very interesting happen. Remember, I told you two, three weeks ago that, you know, the commercials have let this thing go. They're going to make people pay up. The Chinese bought 53 million bushels of corn today, up hmm. 30 cents from just couple sessions ago. Mm -hmm. So that's 53 million bushels, you know, 1.3 million tons. Uh, it's the seventh largest buy. So what they're doing is they are putting the hammer to the to the buyers. And of course, Mexico, uh, you know, bought a couple of cargoes, uh, you know, a couple days ago, pretty, you know, pretty much up there too. Mm -hmm. So it's really, um, you know, this game is playing out the way we see. Uh, I don't see where the top is yet. I don't get the feel for it yet. Okay. So it you know, what is the market telling us? Is it giving you any indicators yet? Uh, the thing is, is that what's going on in the other markets you and I talk about has got everybody scared shitless. <laughs> I'm serious. I mean, they saw what happened in, you know, canola, and they saw what happened in lumber and stuff like this. They're scared to sell this stuff. And, you know, the farmers are laughing all the way to the bank. But, you know, as we always said, you know, you can't laugh until you got it in the bank. Right. Not about... <laughs> Mm -hmm. The other thing. Yeah, yeah, and that's what we've been talking about, how aggressive to get on um, our sales on stuff, you know, because now the crop's in the ground, so that's, you know, step one, mm -hmm. um, you know, looking at your risk profile, but, you know, when to start getting more aggressive and waiting for that emergence and, and seeing what sort of line of sight on the crop you'll get. What's at and stands, mm -hmm. you know, how it's coming up and, and everything else. So, you know, that's what the agronomy people are here for. You mm -hmm. know, we're, we're just showing them what the price is right now per yeah. bushel you know, around the world. So we will see. And, you know, people are greedy. And you know what that means to me? I'm just looking for a place to sell it to them. <laughs> the old mantra, greed and fear, what drives the markets. Exactly, exactly. So at any rate, uh, I guess just as, as a quickie here, uh, Croptimize for the 2020 crop is going to go live on Wednesday after the Wazir report. Okay. Uh, we're going to learn a lot about what's going on here because the May report, as everybody knows or should know, is is that that is the, the first report where we have 2021 supply demand okay. crops. So this is where you know the USDA is taking a first cut at all the wheats, corn, and beans, and then we'll see what 2021 is looking like. Mm -hmm. Because yes. what they've been doing now is they've been trading 21 into you know into the future. But yet 20 has, has been where the S&Ds and the carryouts are looking at. Now we're going to see what we're going to be carrying out, you know, a year from now, year and mm -hmm. a half from now. Yeah. And it's going to be very, very interesting. Um, I, I, I was hoping to get crop demise fired up and running on Tuesday, but do not trade into those reports. <laughs> yes, those <laughs> words. I remember those clearly from the last report. So, um, so yeah, so back to the, you know, for helping farmers time, you know, when the market is telling you to sell, that's what Croptimize, that'll kick off next week. Exactly. Um, so we'll have the first update on that yes. um, next week. So tune back in. Um, maybe do some Q&A afterwards for, sure. be, for be what's glad going on. To discuss what the model is seeing and, and where, where we're at and why we're doing it. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's going to surprise a lot of people because the, the, the model, I, I'm using a new what I call fluid frame uh, to, to do this thing. 
and it's it's going to be very 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 interesting when they when they see what we're going to be doing here so uh not to toot this too much but you know based on where we're at this is going to get really interesting real quick mm -hmm. so so and then looking out uh to the out years any changes out there in 22 oh, yeah. 23 uh, 24 well i tell you what uh ready for this yeah okay uh these corn hit th 636 today okay uh rumors have it that corn was bid eight bucks at st louis for one barge whoa somebody has got you know what in a somebody's rare. got a problem somebody's got a problem uh these 22 corn 525 so you know we're right at that you know 530 where you're, you're looking mm -hmm. at five bucks cash at, at worst yep uh these three is 459 so it, it's it's inside we you know we mm -hmm. got to start yeah know, start getting, paying attention there absolutely mm -hmm. because you can't let 455 go in, in 23 and of course 438 in 24 so even that's mm -hmm. you know creeping up yeah so the, you know the tide is rising the boats are rising uh the spreads are getting nasty remember last week i was telling you july east corn was at buck 16 closed today at 96. <laughs> so you know 20 cent move and a spread you know get that on you and it was just a brutal week uh corn volatility went to 40 percent. it's usually 20 25. so it's the yeah volatility i noticed that in the margin calls yeah margin calls <laughs> So that's why we're drinking malt back here. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> well, I just got back from a uh, from the bank from doing that. So <laughs> good times. Well, um, and the thing is, <laughs> is that you know this is what you know we're going to get into is the psychology of you know oh my god it's sold too early oh my god this it's just like forget about it yeah just hold that yeah made a good decision yeah Hang i don't know what, what you know there used to be some you know, madison avenue you know set it and forget it i don't know what the hell product it was but <laughs> you know i chose that madison avenue is so good set it and forget it <laughs> remember the tagline but not the product exactly <laughs> but uh you know it's really if you've got that money in the bank then you, you know you could begin to to run your financial systems mm -hmm. and from our standpoint that's more important than you know rolling the dice you know, you know, coming into this crop. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like differentiating between what, what should you do for your base, for your risk management. And, you know, then if you want to roll the dice on, on some of your upside production, have at it, but, but to know what, what you're doing and, and not betting the farm. Exactly. Literally, <laughs> literally betting the farm. Mm -hmm. and, and of course, uh, you know, they call it king corn now, you know, that's when, that's when all the crazies come out mm -hmm. is when they think it's king corn. Mm -hmm. So ag Twitter is, is, almost unbearable but yet I'm, I'm sticking around doing my job for the for the company yeah so well moving on to ethanol or or crude what's what's going on well ethanol in the fuel markets uh, you know it's very very interesting uh, you know crude finally broke out on the upside it's, it's back up to 65 66 area uh, ethanol is continued to run um, something has to give something mm -hmm. has to give and there there's your ethanol chart and of course you know you saw the the the, the flag you know, mm -hmm. now let's shoot up against that. But also what's really interesting uh, right after this is uh, next up is hogs. And you say, you know, what the hell's hogs got to do with this? Of course, they eat corn and beans. But look at this. You know, you got a situation where, you know, China is buying all this stuff. And, you know, lots of animals, lots of, you know, mm -hmm. they're, they're just loading up the boats as many as they can get. What this means is that, you know, you got to be very, very careful about hogs and cattle coming up in the next couple of years because... Just like in 2012, you know, everything shot to the moon. They weren't going to pay seven bucks to feed, you know, hogs and cattle, anything. So they just sent the herds to the, to the locker. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, the next year we had an explosive, you know, huge rally in, in the animals because they, they just went to slaughter and weren't replaced. And that's what I'm going to begin to start watching here is, is the, the hog market. And God, I cannot believe I'm doing that because <laughs> I swear to God, I was never going to work in the market. Because I was I was a true board of trade person. Yeah. And it was just like, well, you go work at the Merck. No, no way. <laughs> and here you are. <laughs> yes, yes, here I am. So at any rate, we're keeping our eye on the hog market for all of you. And, you know, one of these days, some, some of this is not going to work. Something's mm -hmm. not going to work because you just can't have hogs rallying with corn going, you know, through the roof as well. Yeah. Well, and how about the other one? Beans. Well, beans, uh, after having, uh, you know, pretty much owned the spring, have stepped to the background. And I guess the war is now the corn is trying to buy acres away, back away from beans. Okay. And that's what's going on now. And the, the, I think I was reading on Twitter the other day, and I'm, I'm sure the number's correct. It was, they went from about 2.7 uh, in, the, in the bean corn ratio to about 236. Hmm. So the, they've taken a, a chunk out of that with this corn rally. Uh, beans are still tight 
I mean, very tight, and it's because of oil. And, you know, that is going to be the kiss of death one of these days. It's just, you know, how long is it going to take mm -hmm. before you can stand in front of this freight train and it won't run you over because of oil. And because, you know, meal is starting to show signs of just, it, it's like the boulder that they're having to drag with, mm -hmm. with them uh, as it goes up. And, you know, canola, oh, my God. Can all hit a thousand? Um, I, I, I saw a guy on Twitter today. He's from Canada. He says, "I got no idea where it's going." Yeah. No idea. <laughs> and I, I, I say exactly the same thing. I got no idea where this thing's going. And I mean, I've got a gallon jug. You know, we make French fries at home. It's just like <laughs> hang on to that. <laughs> well, it's, it's just like well, we got to protect our lumber, all of our copper piping. Now, I, my gallon of canola oil. Mm -hmm. It's just like holy Christ. Mm -hmm. You know, <laughs> they're going to come get it all and clean me out. <laughs> <laughs> but uh you know of course and and then the oil chart here zl you know th this thing just is is just a rocket and you know it's i've seen this a couple times in my career but it's, it's just like everybody's just dreading when you're crushing beans for oil it's just like oh my god what are we gonna do with the meal yep but this thing goes <laughs> the pile keeps building <laughs> yeah, the pile keeps building and you know something has to give and mm -hmm. but yet these markets tend to overreact before they have to adjust and they have to do something about it. Mm -hmm. So uh, anyway, and let's see, what, 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 what are we talking about next? Wheat. Wheat, my fave. Yes, welcome back. <clears throat> well, wheat's coming, uh, you know, wheat's coming into harvest. It is, um, this is about as interesting a year that I've seen um, in quite a while. And we've got $7 wheat up front on the board in Chicago. Um, the other thing is, and you know, people don't realize this. Wheat corn, these these, straight at a buck thirty or buck twenty. I'm sorry, buck twenty. Wheat over. Mm -hmm. So what that means is wheat has bought acres away from corn. Interesting. Yes, because you know the Julys are about thirty over, but the Deces are a buck twenty. So that shows you how the spreads have exploded yeah. in both both markets. But what that means also is is that you know they are not going to plow this wheat up to put put corn in what they're going to do is probably that's what what i would do is just run beans over the top of it and take a shot mm -hmm. see if you can get some beans done with with your wheat crop because i mean we're looking at 762 uh, you know coming right up in july here in the teeth of harvest uh 2022 is 716 so you got seven all the way you know you got seven for two years out on the board mm -hmm. and then 663 for for 2023 wheat so these are better numbers we've seen in a long time Mm -hmm. uh, the drought is intensifying up in North Dakota, which has got me holy, you know, just this is the, the one thing I don't want to do is mess around with spring wheat yeah. in a drought. And <clears throat> SEPA traded 803 today, eight bucks. So that's new crop spring wheat, and then SEP, SEP 2022 is 706, so it broke through $7. Hmm. And the thing is, the stuff's barely in the ground. We got eight in front of it, so mm -hmm. it better stay tuned for this uh, because what what may have happened this year is that red wheat led the way and never gave up, and the hards are coming. Okay. Okay, so, you know, I'm going to watch the spreads. Uh, to give you guys an idea, uh, you know, July, July is trading at 46 over, 46 over, okay, two mm -hmm. years ago, July 21, July 22 was negative 50. So it's almost a buck swing. Yes. From, in the spread. Yeah. You know, the year spread. So, you know, people say, you know, how did you guys make money trading spreads? Well, that's how we did it. Because, I mean, that was sitting a full carry. I mean, hell, I would have taken delivery of that and just, you know, <laughs> just told them, to, you know, just send me the check. <laughs> but, uh, you know, when, when you got carry, you, you, you're going to pay that. Um, you know, the volatility is starting to pick up. And this is the time of year, and like I told you before, I made 70% of all my money trading between Labor Day and Memorial Day, starting Memorial Day and ending on Labor Day. So okay. this is where the, the big boys, the big traders. Yeah. Getting uh, to game time now. But this is game time. Mm -hmm. So, and we're still early because usually, you know, May 31st comes in and then we really start rocking mm -hmm. in, you know, June, July, August. So yeah, then anything else on the grains or? Well, just... outside of canola, it's just like, who knows? I mean, we, we could have a situation here where this is like, you know, uh, Minneapolis wheat in, in 2008, mm -hmm. where we had no idea where that thing was going. 
Yeah. And if you'd have told me when it was trading 18, it was going to go to 25, I'd say, you're out of your mind. Of course, it did it in like yeah. five seconds the yeah. next day. But, uh, you know, it's just one of those things where they have got to clear the market. Mm -hmm. Because whoever short this thing has got a big, big problem. And we're not talking to them. I mean, this is way beyond seeing God. Yeah. Okay, this is toe tag territory. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you're, you're either going to have to get out or they're going to force you out. And then, you know, just like that guy that lost $20 billion, mm -hmm. on, you know, from uh, his, his, what do you call it, family account. Yeah. Lost $20 billion. You know, spec in, the, spec in the stock market. Yeah. You know, this could be something that takes a lot of people out. Mm -hmm. So, and then how about the uh, building materials, lumber and... Well, <laughs> you know, I tell you what, you know, lumber hit, ready for this, 1670 today in the July. Wow. May is, May is almost off the board. May was higher even. Mm -hmm. But there's only like 25 or 30 contracts open. God, God knows what you're doing short this stuff mm -hmm. in May. You know, how, how'd you like to be short? May lumber in May, in delivery, with no limits. Yeah, bad news. <laughs> bad news bears. Yeah. But 1670, and we keep saying numbers, it just, it's crazy. Because mm -hmm. we were talking, what, just two, three weeks ago, it was 1,000. Mm -hmm. And here we are, you know, 60, 70% higher. Yeah. Uh, copper, you know, putting out new highs in, in Europe, trading at 5,000 a ton, which is, I mean, you know, two... Anyway, five dollars a pound for us, ten thousand dollars on the contract mm -hmm. in London in, in LME, and of course we're trading four seventy five, which is you know way way up there for for a building material like this. So the the it has gone beyond you know fin twit and ag twit. It's gone beyond the fact that the Fed has lost control. It's just how bad has the Fed lost control? Mm -hmm. And they're starting to talk about nineteen seventies and Jimmy Carter hmm. with what's going on now. Yeah. <clears throat> so. So, and then the jobs report? Oh, disaster. Absolute freaking disaster today. Um, they expected one million new jobs. They got two, 276. Or Whoa. 267, one of those two numbers. Yeah. I mean, a 70% miss. Uh, think about this. Biden, who, in defending how, <laughs> defending, you know, spinning it, I guess, how bad this thing was, says, well, we, we may need to spend more money. And what does that mean? We're, we're, what do you call it, pushing on a string here pretty soon? Yeah. Uh, you got more money chasing lumber. You got more money chasing copper. You got more money chasing gold and corn mm -hmm. and everything else. And it's just, you know, this could get way out of control sooner rather than later if we don't get somebody in D.C. that gets their, you know, SHIT together. Because <laughs> the, the thing is, is that they're, they're looking at, you know, 6 7 8% inflation in a lot of things. I mean, coffee mm -hmm. just broke through on the upside, for God's sakes. Yeah. And they've, it's gone up 50% in the last four months. And that's, that's not even on the, on the blip. Right. Of course, you know, that'll kill us, <laughs> coffee drinkers. But, yeah. but uh, you know, crude oil back up to 65. So it's building power between 60 and 66, like we talk about every week. It's consolidating, building mm -hmm. power, probably going to go up through it. Um, just, just like, you know, when it comes in, consolidates, goes out the other way, same direction. So what that'll mean is if we get 70, 80, 90 dollar crude oil with interest rates going up and jobs going down, this could get ugly. And, yeah. you know, all you youngsters, you know, I was alive in the 1970s. I was alive when we had, you know, 21 percent T-bills and we had 11 percent inflation and we had 10 percent unemployment. I mean, stagflation. Mm -hmm. I mean, I lived through it and you guys do not want to live through that yeah. again. And I mean, they're, they're pushing this nonsense and it's getting there real fast. Mm -hmm. And you know, the, the market reacted violently in, in the stock market uh, with this jobs report. Mm -hmm. So, well, any other closing comments for this crazy week in the markets? Well, I, I'd, I'd say, you know, what I want everybody to think about is, is that the markets are really gonna get serious and trading seriously in July. Okay. Okay. And you know, we've, we've, <laughs> you say, well, this has been crazy. You ain't seen nothing yet. <laughs> Wait for it. <laughs> Wait for it. Exactly. And I think just stay tuned. Uh, keep, you know, I think this is where, you know, what we're doing with, you know, Croptimize and Farm CFO mm -hmm. is pick your points, sell it, set it and forget it. Yep. Kind of a thing. Because this is, going, you know, 40% volatility in corn. This can go to 70 in no time. Mm -hmm. And 
you know, back in uh, 2012, the, the margins on corn were twenty four, twenty twenty five hundred dollars mm-hmm. per contract. They went down to like nine hundred. Mm-hmm. Remember? Yep. And that, now they're back up in a, you know, just over two thousand now. So yeah, back in that range again. They're they're starting to you know ratchet up the pressure from the CME group on people who want to spec this thing. Mm-hmm. And of course, lumber is I don't lumber that went up like ten percent in margins. I mean, they yeah. they're just sending those guys to the rack. Mm-hmm. And you know, same with copper. It's yeah, because you, you got three, four, five hundred thousand contracts of this stuff. Mm-hmm. This is serious business. Yep, especially with copper. Yeah. So, well, next week we'll be talking WASD, the start of the Croptimize model. Mm-hmm. Um, but in the meantime, happy Mother's Day to uh, all the moms out there. And uh, we'll see you next week. As, as Rizzo was, was, used to say for the New York Mets, he would say, it's Mother's Day. Happy birthday, Mom. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thanks again, and we'll see you next week. <laughs>